Welcome back to the next video. I recorded it right after the other video. It's now 8.20 because that took me 20 minutes to ramble on and check my angles and all sorts of stuff. But here I am, same clothes, same night, let's party. And by party, I mean, let's finish up these notes. So you should have already watched the Bill Nye video and you've described what happens in each chemical reaction. So now let's go ahead and let's just define some of these chemical reactions. Anytime you have a chemical reaction, you can tell because there's gonna be one or more of the following signs or the following pieces of evidence that a chemical reaction has occurred. If there's a change in the color, and I'm not talking like I took a marker and I colored it in. You mix two things together and then all of a sudden they change a different color. That's a chemical reaction. Not just like, oh, this stained it, it covered it up. Although some stains do actually work by causing a chemical reaction. However, most of the time uh, it's if you have a color that wasn't there and you mix two things together and all of a sudden, mm, new color, that is a chemical reaction. If it produces some kind of odor, some kind of stank, the chemical reactions inside your body that are breaking down your food, they produce a, a little bit of a stank. Uh, we usually let those out as a fart. The fart is not the chemical chemical reaction okay instead it's what happened inside of you to break down that food you just release the products as a fart uh, if there's a change in temperature it could either get warmer or it could get colder than it normally was. And I'm not just talking like, oh, I put it in a freezer and it got colder. No, 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 children. There's a chemical reaction. There's a production of a gas. Or if you see bubbles forming, you mix two things together and then you see some bubbles forming. That is clear indication that there has been a chemical reaction happening. If you're producing a precipitate, which be the opposite, you mix two liquids together and then all of a sudden you get a solid forming, precipitating to the bottom, forming a solid. That is another great source of evidence. Any or all of these could happen in a chemical reaction. You won't have all of them all the time. Sometimes you'll have one or two, but usually most chemical reactions you have you have more than one. Go back and look at what you wrote down from the Bill Nye video and try to see which of those evidences of chemical reactions you can see in the video. I will tell you, a steel wool, uh, that chemical reaction does produce a little bit of an odor. So you could have detected that if you were in the room, but you weren't. It was on YouTube and it was recorded back in the 90s, so you weren't alive then. Next page, we have a for real real chemical reaction. This is happening right now inside uh, your furnace. If you live in the city and or you're on a natural gas well, if you're on natural gas, that's this, CH4, that's natural gas. It's gonna react with two oxygen molecules. It's going to release CO2 and water vapor. This is what would be coming out of the backs of people's houses. You got the little like, pipe that sticks out and it releases CO2, releases water. You see the water vapor. That's why it's like white stuff coming out of the back. You don't see the CO2, that's invisible. No, so we're making one CO2 molecule. We're making two water molecules. How exciting. And they're also producing a large amount of heat. Remember, change in temperature. That's how we know we have a chemical reaction. You can't see any of these molecules changing, but we know we have a chemical reaction because uh, this releases a lot of heat, the kind of heat that heats our house. And of course, go ahead on the left side, again, label your reactants. On the right side, label your products. We would say methane or CH4 reacts with ox two oxygen molecules to make CO2 and two water molecules. Now a few more blanks to fill in. Uh, this next thing I'm about to tell you is called the law of conservation of matter. It's also known as the first law of thermodynamics. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed. In other words, for every single atom you have on the left where you have your reactants, you must have one of those atoms on the right where you have our products. Therefore, we say that all equations must be balanced. Think of a teeter-totter. Not more atoms on one side than the other. That would make it not so even. It's got to have the same number of atoms on both sides. That would make it even. Sounds scary, balancing equations. It's really not too bad. When we write out our equation, there's a few more terms you need to know. We use what's called subscripts and coefficients. You know, like the coefficient in math class. Yes, coefficient in math class, 2x. 2 is the coefficient. Now, subscript, the sub means below, so instead of it being like 2x and then squared, you'd be 2x sub 2. That could be subscript. That would be your subscript. The coefficients will tell you how many molecules you have. We've got two molecules of x2, whatever x2 is. Coefficient 
tells you you have that many of those things. The subscript tells you how many elements are in the molecule. So for example, right here, that means that we have X bonded to X. The two here means that we have two of them. So here we have two X molecules, whatever element X is. Sounds fun in sci-fi. You know, it's not so sci-fi. Go back here and I want you to label your coefficients and your subscripts. Again, if you look at the picture, this is showing you you have one, that's understood, one methane molecule. Here we have two oxygen molecules. Each molecule has two oxygen atoms on there. So make sure that you label your coefficients and your subscripts for both the products and the reactants. Thank you for watching. You should have some pretty good notes. And we stop this recording. And we come over here and we stop this one too.